Welcome to the third in our series of solving challenges with Power BI. This one is all about cleaning data, so let's get started. The course materials for this event are in the usual place and the link is in the comments below. You'll come to this LBAG online public folder and you'll want to go into the cleaning data with Power BI. Once you're there, you want to download all of these. Uh, the main file is this Titanic data, that's our data set, but there also is a worked example Power BI desktop file here and also a step-by-step -step tutorial. Not exactly what we'll do here, but similar enough. If you open the data set, you'll see that it looks like this. This is a famous data set, it's used for uh, machine learning tutorials and what it has, it has got uh, 891 of the passengers of the Titanic. And what we can see is that we've got various information about them. Uh, we've got, let's have a look at our first passenger here, Mr. Braun. He is Mr. Owen Harris Braun. He is a third class passenger. He's a man aged 22. Now these two columns need a bit of explanation, Sib SP and Parch. Sib SP is the number of siblings and spouses. Um, Parch is the number of parents and children. So Mr. Braund had a sibling and a spouse, either a, a wife or a brother or a sister, we don't know. And in his extended family, there weren't any parents and children. He had a ticket. Um, he paid seven pounds and five shillings in old money for his fare. We don't know what his cabin is. He got on at S stands for Southampton, C for Sherbrooke, Q for Queenstown. And this zero here means unfortunately that he did not survive. So that's our data set. It's a strange data set. And if real life, we would go to the people providing that data set and say, why have you given us only 891 of the 2,200 people on the Titanic? And why have you given us such uh, strange columns such as CBSP and Parch? But this is a training example, so we're not going to do that. We're in Power BI Desktop now, so let's load our data and create our first couple of visuals. I've clicked on the, the set. The tab I want is the Passengers tab, and I'm going to click on Transform Data. That brings it into the Query Editor. We'll do a lot more work in the Query Editor later on but for now I'm just going to close that down and go straight into Power BI proper. Once I've done that I'll have the field list on my right hand side. Now what I like to do always is create a measure almost as soon as I've got here which is I click on home and in fact I click on modeling and I click on new measure and this is a, a number of it's always useful to be able to count the rows and in this case since every row is a passenger I can count the passengers. So I'm going to create a measure called number of passengers and there's a DAX function called count rows and that DAX function takes a table. We've only got one table there called passengers. So I'm creating that measure called number of passengers. And here we are, we can see the measure here. It's got this little calculator icon. And if I click on it now, uh, Power BI gives me a bar chart and what I can do is I hover over it and look at the axis it tells me I've got 891 passengers. Let's just change that column chart into a bar chart and let's say that we want to have a look at it by embarked and there we are and I will create another column chart and I'll put survived on my axis and I'll put my number of passengers on my value and for various reasons I'll move that over there so now we've got two charts, but they're not very good charts. First of all, if we have a look at this left-hand side, we see it's got an S, C and Q, and our users will have to remember that S means Southampton and so on. Likewise, on the right-hand side, we're looking at the survived, and we can see that uh, uh, 549 people didn't survive. But this 0 and 1 for died and survived isn't very good. Uh, Power BI, we really need to say died and survived. As well as that, when we put that on the axis, Power BI is thinking it's some sort of linear axis, just like the axis of a scatter chart or something like that. We could change that and go along and say, actually, it's not a continuous axis, it's a categorical axis. But even so, we shouldn't need to do that. So let's go in, let's clean up our data and make it easier for analyzing and visualizing. 
Clicking on Transform Data will take us back into the Query Editor. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to rename a column. Let's call this Gender. What you can see that's happened there is added another step to our applied steps. As we click on various applied steps, we see the state of the data as at that applied step. And under the covers, a Power BI is writing a script for us in a language called M. We never need to worry about what that language looks like, but it means that it's automating our manual actions. So we've created our, 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 our first step. Let's have a look at this name. And the names have a certain pattern to them. They have the last name, comma, title, full stop, and then the other names. And what we can do is we can take advantage of that to split that column up. Maybe we're interested in getting last names and titles. So what I'm going to come, I'm going to say split column. Various ways you can do it, but by delimiter. And it's found that the first delimiter is guess the first delimiter we want is, is a comma. I'm going to say that's fine. I'm going to split it at the leftmost and I'm just going to do that. And that splits it into name1 and name.2. Name.1 is our surname. Um, what I'll do is I'll call that last name. And I'll come over here and I'll do the same trick with name.2. I'll come along and I'll split it by delimiter. This time it's the full stop. And again, doesn't matter in this case, but I'll just say I want it to split once, just the left moment's occurrence of that full stop. And I'll say OK. And that gives us our title. And I'll call this our other names. Lovely. We can look at the column profiling for our titles and see that we've got some quite interesting titles there, including a countess, a John Keir and uh, a lady. Uh, we have actually got some spaces preceding the mis these titles and also the other names because there were spaces in the original names and so what we can simply come along is we can format and trim our title and also trim our other names. Let's improve our survived column. We can see from the green bars that it's only got two values 0 and 1 and no empty values so what we can do we can go to add column and we're going to add a conditional column. And we're going to call our new column survival. And we're going to say if our survive column equals, notice that we've got lots of other operators there, and we can compare it to a column or a value. In this case, I'm comparing it to a value is not. Then the result is died. And since we know there's only two values, 0 and 1, then I can say that else survived. I'm going to click on that. What it's done is given us a new column called survival. ABC123 means that Power BI isn't quite sure what the data type would be. We can help it and just say that's a text data type. Once we've got that we no longer need the survive column so I'll remove it. Now let's improve on our P class column. Instead of 123 this is a passenger class, so I'd like first, second, and third. We could use a conditional column as we did before, but just for right here, I'm going to use column from examples. And I'm going to say uh, from selection, so I'm going to base my examples on this current selection. With column from examples, we basically gives examples, and Power BI works out the formula for us. So our first row, we're going to give an example, P class is free, so we're going to give an example of third. And we can see that Power BI has already tried to guess. It's saying what you want to do is add RD on the end of it. So it's got one RD and two RD. That's not quite right. So we have to give it another example. And Mr. Cummings, Mrs. Cummings is um, is not one RD. Is we'll give an example. She's a first class passenger. Put on that. And now um, Power BI uh, revises its guess. It's not got the and it's kind of doing a kind of substitution sort of thing. So as I says, I know I'm going to substitute for first and third, but I don't know about second. So we'll go to a second class example and type in second. And that's that's good enough. We've got our example. I'm going to call this my passenger class, two S's, and I'm going to say OK. And the column by examples have been like a helpful friend. It's actually calculated it for us. And if I now uh, click on the gear icon, 
which shows me exactly what's gone on there. It said, actually what I've done is built a conditional column for you. And there we go. We can now remove our P-class column. There is a theory that large families didn't survive because they were all distributed around the ship and when the accident happened and they all waited to regroup before they got in a lifeboat and when they eventually did there weren't any lifeboats. So let's have a look at that theory. We've got these two columns Sib SP and Parch and by adding them together and adding one we can get an idea of the family size. My family is, my siblings and spouses, my parents and children <coughs> and me. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a custom column this time and that gives me a formula bar and I'm going to call this my family size and what I can say is I can write in the formula here which says that it's equal to my siblings and spouses double click on that and then I'm going to say plus and I can use IntelliSense here as well Parch is my parents and children plus one to click on OK. It's created this a family size. I'll remind that that is an integer, a whole number. And I can also want to remove my two columns. I don't really need those any longer. Our final cleaning task is with the embarked column. Instead of these short codes, we'd like to replace the values so that an S becomes Southampton. And what I'll also do as well in the advanced option, say match the entire cell contents and ditto a C becomes Sherberg. And ditto with that. And finally, our Q becomes Queenstown. And let's change that as well. And so now we're done. Our data looks good. And what we're going to do is we're going to come out here, close and apply, and we're ready to do some visualization in Power BI. We can see that our original chart of embarked against number of passengers is now looking a lot better because it's got the full names of the embarkation points. In the next video, we'll be um, visualizing all this nice clean data, starting off with the ability to build several charts and show cross highlighting between them. We'll build an age profile of the Titanic in this ribbon chart and also show which classes they were in. We'll analyze who survived on the Titanic with a key influences visual. And we'll also look at the ability to drill through from the summary to a detail page showing, for example, the details of a particular family. As a reminder, these are parts of sessions brought to you by our meetup group, the London Business Analytics Group. Um, we normally meet in London, but obviously during the lockdown, we've gone online. We have a, a session every Monday and Tuesday. The next session you can see on the screen after this one is all to do with creating maps with Power BI. We hope to see you on one of the live sessions. Thank you.